I'm gonna do a limb swap here on a new PSE, and I thought this would be an awesome video because the newer PSEs have a new pocket as well as a new axle and cam spacing system. So there's a little bit of a new process to that, but also just wanted to walk new people through the process of when you change out limbs, some of the things that you might wanna know of or use during this protocol. One of the things that you should keep in mind, depending on the type of bow press that you have, is when you press that bow and you remove the strings and cables off, you're gonna wanna make sure, especially if it's a jack style press like this, um, or if it's kind of a squeeze style press that has little pins that allow you to preset how far that press is for closeness or the width, prior to you cranking it and then letting it back out. The main thing that you wanna keep in mind is even though this bow is flexed right now, you have to remember this bow is gonna be completely let out and it's gonna look like a recurve bow that has had the limbs that are bent like this now let out flat. So you wanna make sure that you have enough space for that. Right now you can see I only have about four to six inches of travel right here in this jack. So if I, press this right now and remove these strings and cables and then went to let this down, I wouldn't be able to get it let out all the way. So one of the things that you need to do is actually lower these arms a little bit more, you know, even right there, lower them a little bit more to begin with and utilize more of this jack so that once we let this out, you're gonna be able to have full range of motion. So I'm kinda of getting closer up here, honestly about where I'm at right there. I could probably move one step closer if I wanted. So I'm gonna go about right there. Okay, so make sure I'm cinched down everywhere. Perfect. Okay, so you can see I've got quite a bit of room here. Um, the other thing I wanna talk with you about first before we let this out is depending on your level of knowledge when it comes to breaking a bow completely down, there's a couple tips I can tell you that become really helpful. One is if you haven't fully broken a bow down, don't be afraid to use your camera and take pictures of your cam because how those cables and strings go around the grooves in your cam are absolutely critical to safety. So if you put those on the wrong way and go to pull it back, it's gonna be you know, dangerous for you potentially and dangerous for the cam and the system. So you always wanna make sure that these strings and cables are all put together the correct way. So by taking a picture of that and seeing how it's wrapped is gonna be very, very helpful for you down the road. Now in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and press this. And honestly, the first thing I do is I'll remove the cables off there. So I'll take the cables off. Now I'm actually gonna replace these strings and cables with some brand new ones. So for this one, it's gonna be a little bit different than if I had a new, had one that ha already had new strings or had the same strings that I wanted to use. If I did have one like that, then what I would do is I would make sure that you had some little hangers close by like this to where as you take these things off, you can hang them right onto a hook like this without losing any of the twists. So I'm gonna take this string off right now and I would just I'll just demonstrate this. So I would keep this exactly how it was shaped. Don't take any twists in or out and I would hang that back on that hook just like that. 
Same thing over here. Take it off, don't lose any twists. Set it to the side. The other thing that can be helpful for you is some little clips like this where you can just clip that like that so it can keep it from untwisting. And then here on this, this yoke system, I'm gonna pull this, I'll remove both sides, I'll hold these together, and then these immediately go right there. So once I take these off, they'll, I'll know which side is which, just like that. So I can hang those there, do this bottom one. Again, they go together, stay on the same sides, and hook right there. Then you're gonna to wanna to make sure all your strings and cables are kind of clear of your riser as you let this down and just slowly let this down. Now, as a protocol, I can tell you, you know, there's a lot of force in limbs and in bow, honestly, compound bows in general. So when I'm letting this down, I'm trying to stay clear of this, make sure you don't have your fingers in anything, make sure you're not holding a cam, just maybe hold, hold this riser and then go ahead and back this down. And so you can see I'm having to back this down much more than it took for me to actually just press the string to take them off. So that's why we started with making sure that we had enough overall movement in the bow press so that once these limbs are fully relaxed, we're actually able to take the bow out of the press. So you can see here, I'm almost to the bottom and right there is the bottom. So now this bow is free and I was able to have just enough clearance to fully flex this limb. And now I can safely take this bow out of the press and now we have a bow that's completely relaxed and ready for us to do the limb swap and get these cams in those new limbs. Now that we've got the bow relaxed, I get the brand new limbs and I'll have them set to the side and I'll actually flip these, these new limbs over um, because the numbers that are on the new limbs are important. And for me, the best way to let you understand how to lay these out is to do it this way, where you get your new limbs, turn them upside down, put them there. Then what you'll wanna do is on your bow, there'll be a small Allen wrench bolt right here. This is called the rocker. So this is on the limb pad, but it's literally called the rocker. So I normally just kind of hold one side and slightly loosen that just a little bit so that it takes the pressure off the limbs because this rocker bolt squeezes the limb and tries to hold that limb into place. So just relieving that pressure will then allow you to grab your limbs, tip them just like this and remove them from the pocket. And then what I personally do is I'll take this top limb and I'll lay it down like that. Then I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the bottom. Slightly loosen that. Then I'll remove this, tip it upside down and lay it just like that. Then you can take your riser, you can lay your riser in the middle here and kind of just remember this was your top that was your bottom, okay? So however you need to lay that so you understand it. Um, the other thing too, if by chance you get these things mixed up, normally your cams have some type of uh, engraving that'll tell you top or bottom. If it's, if it's got a, a B on it, uh, it's normally gonna be a bottom. If it's got a T on it, it's normally gonna be the top. So just kind of check for that, and recognize which way you need to tip your risers. Now, what I do is once these are upside down, I'm gonna do one at a time. And what I look for is these numbers that were on your limbs, okay? Because these are, these are actually deflection numbers. And right here, you're gonna be able to see these. So when limbs go through 
um, a planer to essentially sand these down to where once they're checked for deflection in a deflection machine, which is they get bent at a certain poundage, when they get bent and depending on that flex number, it'll actually be written on that limb. So for the most part, this is, this is a 13 limb, um, but this is the micro number right here. And so what you can see with the micro numbers, this one has um, a 110 on this side and a 113 on this side. It's actually written in black. What you need to recognize is they normally put the little bit micro heavier deflection. So again, even though these are both 14s, the micro number, this is a slightly heavier side. It's gonna go on the side of your bow where the cable rod would sit. So in this case, that would be just like that. That heavier number would be on that side. So what I do, because you have four limbs and they all have micro numbers, I'll just try to find those numbers to where the highs and lows match up better with what we've got. So I've got a 110, a 113, um, and then over here I've got a 111 and 114. So uh, the heaviest is this 114. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the heaviest one I've got on that same side. Okay, then I'm gonna take the next heaviest I've got, which would be right here, and I'm gonna take that 106, I'm gonna put it there. Now what I'm gonna do is put the lighter one next to the lighter of the two, and this heavier one next to the heavier of the two. So now as I put these back together, I'm gonna have the highest deflection number right next to that highest deflection number. So it's gonna work out really good. Now keep in mind, Limbs, every single limb, especially when you have a four limb bow or a split limb bow, every limb is not gonna be exact. They are very close and even though those numbers are four apart, the number is actually fractions of a pound. So it's very minimal, but this is what helps you prevent any type of lean on your cam system. And the reason there is lean on cams is because your strings and cables can't all stay in the center of the riser. Your string can, because it shoots your arrow through there. The cables have to be pulled to the side so that your arrow can clear that. Because the cables are being pulled over like this, it's putting more tension on one than the other. Okay, so having those micro, uh, those micro numbers are actually a very, very good thing. Okay, so one at a time, we've got those laid out. We kind of know what we need to do. Um, I'll go ahead and remove any type of limb dampener device that you have in your limbs. Some of the new bows have new ones. Some don't have any, but if you do have them, do it that way. Now, once we have our limb with that cam in there, this is gonna be easy to do, especially with this new system that, the newer system that PSE has is, is pretty dang interesting. You have to have a Torx style wrench, so this is a T25, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove that screw from the one side. Now, me personally, I normally start with one side and it makes it really easy if you lay this thing out properly like this. And it's honestly, this is one of the reasons why I love having these mats that we make for your bow shop work surface because you can set this stuff here. They're made long enough for a bow so that you can lay all this stuff out. So I can remove this one screw and by keeping it all laid out in order, Okay, I remove this limb. Now I'm gonna remove this little, this is a clip right here. And again, if you take pictures of these before, you can take a picture of it before you do this for your first time, it'll help you put it back together properly. Okay, so there's my screw that went on the outside. There's that limb. Now I'm gonna remove this first shim 
and I'm just gonna set it right there, okay? Now I've got my cam is out. Now over here, I'm gonna put that spacer on that side, and now I have to remove this screw here, which is such a cool new system for these axles. Okay, now that you've got both screws out of the ends of that new axle piece, okay, what you're gonna notice is on the inside of your limbs now, there's gonna be these top hat washers that are actually going into your limb system, which is pretty new. And they're gonna be on the inside of where the cam would be. So since I've laid this down the exact same, I'm gonna take that I'm gonna put it in the exact same spot, okay, on the new limb. So there's my old limb, I removed it, I put it on the inside of the new limb. Right here is my old limb. Okay, I'm gonna remove that, I'm gonna put it on the inside of that limb, and then you can set your old limb to the side. So now, all we have to do is reverse order of what just happened. So we're going to put the axle into that top hat we are going to put the screw in there and go ahead and tighten that screw down entirely then once that happens we can then install that washer or your shim kit. Sometimes they're gonna be washers, but this new system that PSE has is actually a shim. Then your cam can go back in, just like that. Then this washer is gonna go on the other side or this, this shim. Then you're gonna go back in your limb again. And then you're gonna go ahead and put that screw back on the end and at this point it's usually easier if you do have two Torx wrenches with you because then you can actually do both sides. Okay, and once the one side's snug then you can go ahead and focus on tightening that other side down. Okay, both sides are snug. And what I love about this new system is these are very secure now. These limbs aren't flopping around like they used to, but you still have full mobility of the race and the bearing. So just like that, you can see here, if this was being flexed, that is your top limb assembly right there, totally ready to go. So now we're gonna repeat that same process on the bottom, remove the screw, slide the limb off, and just place it all out just like that and you can easily get everything right back into place. Okay, so I've got both limbs totally back together. Um, the riser is gonna sit here exactly how we're gonna put it together. One thing that I wanna tell you is when it comes to any type of a creak or a sound that you might get in any type of bow in the pocket system, it's normally gonna come from where that limb is flexing on the rockers. So for most bows, you're gonna see where these rockers right here have some type of lubricant on there. 
a white lithium grease is actually really good to have and normally just putting a little bit in that area where the limb's going to be pivoting and then even on these outside contact tabs right here and there that contact the outside of the limb and normally there's going to be a little bit right up here in the front of that pocket. Now, one of the things that's going to be critical when you put this back together is since you loosened these rockers a little bit, there's a possibility of this limb rocker to not be in the correct place. So it might be easy to grab this limb and, and put it in there just like that. And obviously it's going to be sitting on an improper part of this, this rocker. So you want to make sure that your rocker pads, regardless of the type of bow you have, are up and in a position to where with this limb, we're gonna go down, we're gonna make sure that these holes right inside the pocket right here, go right inside those holes that are on the limb. And then right here on this pocket, you can see that it's still a little bit tight. So we've gotta kind of force that into position just like that. And once we've done that, that limb is secure. I always, as a protocol, make sure the flat part of your rockers are turned in the right position. Obviously, if you had this thing in there and that rocker was upside down like that, that's gonna cause limb damage once you press it. So make sure your rockers are in the correct spot when you take this limb you seat it into the correct position, just like that, okay? Then what I would recommend is go ahead and take your Allen wrench and snug up those bolts that hold your rocker into position. Just snug them up just a little bit. I wouldn't go full tight just yet because that does cinch on that pocket pretty tight and it sucks that limb together. You want it snug, but not like 100%. Go to about 85 or 90% on that, just to make sure it's held into place. Once we've pressed it and everything, we can snug those down once they settle, okay? So this, we're gonna do the same thing. Make sure those rockers are in the correct position. Take the limb, align those holes, okay? Then we wanna make sure we pull this limb into position without damaging on the PSE, there's two bushings right here. You wanna make sure you don't pinch those. So I'm gonna slide that into position. And that's why having that loose for this limb swap is so important. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten these down a little bit. Pull that into position. Tighten it down. And this is great. So as a protocol, what you should do is make sure that your cam, your top cam was put back into the top spot. Again, depending on the cam, there's normally a series of numbers. There's normally a T for top and there's a B for bottom. So in this case right here, there is, you know, this cam 82491 T, HL, so top high let off. Uh, part number, and this is a BHL, so bottom, top. We know we've got this thing back together, and honestly, it's kind of all downhill for now, so let's go back to the press. Depending on your type of bow, and especially your type of press, will kind of determine whether or not you should relax the pressure on these limbs with your limb bolt a little bit before you do this. Now with this press, I'm really only flexing the limb. I'm not worried about the extra pressure on the riser. Um, especially if you have a heavier set of limbs, it might be a good idea to take a, a limb bolt like this and you know back it out about three times evenly and allow some of that pressure to come off. Now, depending on the type of system, sometimes backing that out a little bit like that actually makes the whole system really loose and hard to press. Uh, with these, 
and especially with these limbs, these are, I've, I've dropped down to a lower limb uh, for some summertime practice. So with these limbs, they're pretty light anyway. So I'm pretty dang happy with not backing it out. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is get this thing back in the press. Again, always press it at the pivot point of the limb, not on the riser, which we've done. Um, I'm gonna lock that into position. Adjust your rollers. Go ahead and bring that up. Adjust that a little bit. Right there. Right there. I'm on the same number on my press, which is good. Now in this case, I'm actually going to be using a brand new set of strings and cables. So this would kind of be a secondary tutorial for you guys as well. Now I've got to press this thing quite a ways. Remember we've, we started with the press very high in order to let these limbs all the way out. So when we go to flex these limbs now for the first time, we're gonna to have to go through quite a bit of travel now, if you haven't done this before um, and you really don't know how much you should flex the limbs, like obviously you don't want to flex them too far and over flex them to where you could cause damage. But one of the things you could do is when you first put this thing in the press and you make contact, you could always just make a little temporary line on your jack right there so that you know how high you should go before you put your strings and cables on. So the first thing that I'll do after this limb swap is I am going to do the cables first. So here's the string. I'm actually going to take this string and I'm just going to set it to the side, make sure I don't lose any twists out of it. I'm just going to set it right there for right now. Take off this first cable and Without losing any twists, I'm just going to stretch it out, okay? Now, on these PSEs, their cables actually go all the way around their cams, full revolution. So, I'm going to hook these up to both of these posts right there. They're hooked on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this cam around counterclockwise and let it wind up. Now, one of the things I'm going to tell you is back here on the back side of this cam, there's the module. Make sure you get on the inside of that module there to begin with. This is a little bit tricky because the cam actually has five tracks. The center track is the string and the outer two tracks on both sides are the cables. When the cables are first put on, they actually have to be on the very inside track. And what I do is I'll hold this PBTS system like this and I'll just roll the cam counterclockwise on the top here and let it follow that track properly on both sides as I roll it around. So right there, I've rolled it all the way around. That cable has been wrapped perfectly. I can see that it's hooked on the post it's hooked on the post. The string is on the inside track, inside track. And as it goes around, it's now on the outside track, perfectly safe. And I would recommend getting some clamps like this. So you could do that just to temporarily hold it. Okay. Now I'm not going to hook this bottom cam piece up yet. I'm actually going to use another clip and hold that into position. I'm going to wind this top one first. So right here is both sides. I'm going to bring this silver cable loop around just like that. Now on this side, I'm going to roll it that other way. So on this side, I'm going to wind it 
just like this. The cam is, make sure you clear that module, make sure you stay on these little tracks and it follows. Make sure it's following this little track right here. Make sure it's following that around so it'll slip right into the slot on both sides, just like that. And just keep now turning this bottom cam clockwise like this until you've come back around full circle knock on signs right there or the evolve cam system will be there and then i can hold it temporarily like that so it doesn't unwind now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this cable and i'm actually going to hook this cable down here where it's supposed to hook on to that cam and that'll prevent that one from turning. Now I can remove this one. I can also remove that clamp. And I can take this loop now, hook it on the bottom cam down here. Good, I can remove that. So you can see this cam has got both cables in position. Now I'm going to take my string. You can always tell your top, you sh on a good string, you should have the, the string marked in the dead center with some type of material where your peep would go. And I can see here this small serving right there is for the stop. So this is my bottom, this is my top. Now I'm going to take this and move it around this cam and hook it hook the string on, and I'll, I actually pull all the slack out of this as I'm going, just like this. Here's a, here's a very good example of what to look for. So as I let a lot of tension off, you can see that cable kind of slipped off that PBTS there. I'm just gonna make sure that's proper. We're still in the proper tracks there. I'm pulling on this string so it has some tension on it. And then I'll feed this back down through and hook it properly on the string post and follow that cam around just like that. Now, the only thing I haven't done is I haven't put the cable slide back on, but what I'm going to do for the first time in a very important protocol for you to do is I always find the end to each of the strings and cables. I'll find, I'll literally find the end and I'll use my finger and follow that end to make sure that I'm properly hooked on the posts everywhere I need to be. So I'm going to look over here. I can make sure down in here, I'm hooked on that cable. Okay, I'm following that same cable down over to here. I can see that that string, the cables are wrapped around the outsides going all the way to the insides. And my cable is properly hooked around that post perfectly right there. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the next cable. I'm gonna make sure that I'm hooked on properly right there. I'm gonna feel it with my finger feel it with my finger, and then I'm gonna follow that, make sure it's in the track, follow that all the way down to come up here, and then I'm gonna to look to make sure I'm in the outside parts of the cam, it's looping all the way around, going to the middle, perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing on the string. I'm all the way around that cam, perfect on the string, and honestly, holding this tension right now is gonna help you with that. So now as I lower this out, I have got this bow pretty dang close. So now what I've got to do is a couple things that I've done this limb swap. I need to make sure I get my roller guard put back in place and I properly hook that over. So let me find this roller guard quick and I'll show you one more thing to look at. All right, so here's my roller guard. One thing to keep in mind with your roller guard is if you see here, one cable is always gonna be on the inside, one cable is always gonna be on the outside. 
You also want to notice where those naturally cross. You can see here, they naturally cross under the rod. Sometimes they cross above the rod like that. Wherever they cross naturally, that's where you want to let them remain cross. So don't force these into crossing up here and, and putting your cable slide on to where that cross would be unnaturally above. It naturally crosses there. So what you're going to notice is the way they're crossing right here, this cable is actually closer to the rod. This cable here is closer to the string. So when you put your roller guard on, you'll notice that they are also offset like that. So what you want to think about is which one is further away and which one's closer. So when I slide this on here like this, you'll notice that right here is the close one. Okay. And then right there is the further one. And when you do it properly, you should have a space right there. Once you've restrung it, and you've got your cable rod back on there, the last thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to adjust that string and cable. If it's a new one, you'll wanna adjust the string and cable so that your cam rotation is correct. If it was your old string and cable, then you should be fairly close if you follow that protocol of hanging those strings and cables without letting any of the twists out of them. So once you do that, the last thing that you can do is take an Allen wrench and make sure you do fully snug down uh, these, po these pockets like that. Make sure you get that last little bit snug down on your pockets on each side. And if you want to go through and make sure you check these axle screws one more time as well. And from there, again, always follow your strings and cables with your fingers making dang sure that you're in the proper tracks and everything's back into the cam position that you need it to be uh, before you pull that back for your first time. But that is how you do a limb swap with the new PSE system.